Okay, we're here at New Jersey Tea Party Coalition's annual Tax Day Rally on the Green in Hackensack, and I'm with Joe Connor, who just finished speaking with the group. Hello, Joe. Hi, Laura. Nice to see you. Same here. And Joe, you have such a personal story to tell, and it's heartbreaking. But if you could just share with us what um, you know, why you're here, and how you're involved. Sure. Um, you know, my father was killed by a Puerto Rican terrorist group, the FALN, when we were kids in 1975. Um, Bill Clinton released those terrorists from prison. Um, they hadn't requested the clemency, they were, they were granted it in 1999. Eric Holder was his deputy attorney general at the time, and what has is, what is turned out is that it was a, an alliance between Holder and Hillary Clinton that pushed the, uh, these, ter these terrorist releases through. It was it for the votes? It was for Hillary's votes, and, and uh, Holder has always had a sympathy for FALN terrorists, certainly, and terrorists, I believe, in general. Yeah, that's right. Didn't he, um, his firm represent terrorists before he came to the Obama White House? Yeah, they have been. And, um, I, I can. People have asked me why, why Holder supports the terrorists. I don't know. I don't. I can't look into the man's heart. All I know is that he has supported it, and he seems to agree with their causes. And you've been very involved since that time, um, and you've met with Eric Holder, is that right? Well, I testified against him at his confirmation hearing in Washington about two years ago. Um, I sat behind him when he was testifying. Um, I walked past him in the hallway and never actually spoke with him personally. So did he ever say, uh, extend his condolences? There was no connection at all. I know he knew who I was because I was on a very short list of people who were testifying, um, but uh, there was no recognition, no, no acknowledgement of, of me or the other people. And so that's really, you know, such a devastating thought to lose your dad at such a young age. And then you talked about losing your cousin in the World Trade Center. Yeah, 9-11, you know, I, I worked downtown and, um, at the time. And um, Steve worked for Kenner Fitzgerald, and he grew up in Saddlebrook and lived in Franklin Lakes. Um, that morning, I was commuting with my brother, as I did every day. And Tom works for the different company than I do. And... I went my way and he went his and I watched out the window as the planes hit the buildings and saw the people jumping and I called Steve and uh, couldn't get through to him so I called his cell phone and uh, you know I didn't know which tower he was in you know one or two who knew um, and I was hoping he was in the south tower when the north one was hit first but uh, he was in the north tower and no one ever heard from him. Dear, I'm so sorry. That was my father's, was my father's godson. So to have two family members to kill by terrorists in such a short... Within blocks, within blocks of each other. Francis Tavern is only a few blocks from the World Trade Center. And so when you talk about this to all of us here, what do you... I'm sure it conjures up you know, the same set. It, it does. And, you know, you have to try to put that out of your mind when you, when you do... You, what I found is I, I use it to get a little emotion, but not the sad emotion. It, it becomes anger <laughs> when you end up talking to people like this because you have to, you have to really let people know that... That we exist, and um, you know, terrorism isn't some random thing. It can happen to anybody. It happened to us twice, and it happens to real people. And my family is no different from anybody else's family. And uh, I think people need to understand that. That uh, you know, it's not. It's it's not a. It, it's it's real, and it's it, it unfortunately affects people, and it's not getting any better. I know, and what, in terms of, you know, you've been so active in trying to get in front of folks and let share your story and also those people in Washington. Do you have any hope that in this administration things will change? Um, no. Um, I really don't. I, I, I listen to Holder talk, I listen to Obama talk, and they have no recognition of the peril that our country is in as a result of these terrorists. They don't get it. They don't care. Um, and when I saw the senators in Washington, when I testified, they literally thought, I, I could feel it. We were some pathetic lower class that they would ne never have to deal with in their lives. Um, they've, we've created, the founders would be horrified. You know, we were supposed to be a, a citizen government, and we're not. We're, we're a government of, of, of upper class, and we're treat, the regular people who know what's going on in this country are treated poorly. I was going to say something other than that, but they were treated terribly. Because it, 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 that's a feeling many of us have, like we're the, at the uh, Philistines at the hedgerow. Yeah, we are. You know, they're, they're the gods on, on Mount Olympus and we're the peons and um, we are subjects. Um, they don't get that they work for us and we're going to kick their asses out. 
and I think that's you know a very strong emotion that most of us have. Yours is very personal, but many of us feel the same way that we've just been disrespected far too long. Absolutely, you know, and you know, I had a terrible tragedy, a couple of them in our lives, but I've been able to turn this tragedy around a little bit right now and let our voice be heard from a normal person. I grew up like everybody else, and you know, I, for whatever the reason, have a bit of a stage where I can where I can express what a lot of people are feeling, and I know I'm just an average person, so if I feel it, the average person probably feels it. So, I, you know, I'm trying to give voice to that. And what do you see when you do you talk to your family, your friends, people that you don't know? Do you sense that they feel the same way you do, Joe? Yeah, I, I think Americans in general are just, are, look, the, uh, someone like Donald Trump is gaining traction because he is saying things that the average American feels. And, and somehow I'm saying some things that the average American, people are so frustrated. They want, they want politicians to just talk to them truthfully. And, and that's why I was saying, I was thinking about Trump the other day, and I'm saying, they love Trump. If this was baseball, he throws fastballs. The the rest of the politicians are throwing curveballs and change-ups and, 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 you know, hitting the corners of the plate and never really coming with the hard stuff. And that's why Trump is throwing his fastballs and he's getting traction because people are starving to get the truth. I, I, I totally agree. We've been lied to and they treat us like idiots. Correct. We've been lied to. And anybody, you know, I've met liberals who are changing, who, who are saying, I just want the truth. They just want, they're, they're so starved for someone to treat them like a human being and that, 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 is, that they respect enough to tell the truth to. So if you had advice for other people like you, like us, would you encourage them to get involved in Tea Party? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, whether it's Tea Party, definitely, blog, talk to people. Look, the more you keep it to yourself, you never, you know, you, you, you got, everyone has a voice to be heard and talk to people and let them explain what you mean. Even if it's only for your own mental health, but get to the Tea Party if you can. Get out there and uh, and show the people what Americans believe. And don't people are afraid. Just as a, people talk about the Tea Party like it's some sort of crazy people, and we're you know we're just people trying to keep the country under control. And uh, it's just a good bunch of people trying to do what's right. And uh, you know and the media put, portrays us to be some sort of racist or KKK and. It's crazy. We're just normal Americans. Well, it's a Saul Alinsky. Yeah, right. Well, that's it. I mean, you're Saul Alinsky. The, 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 um, you demonize your opponents, and you call them racist, and you marginalize them. And that's exactly what Saul Alinsky did, and that's the uh, playbook that the, uh, that the Democrats are going off right now. It is, but we're really glad you were here, and it was a great crowd. Well, yeah. It was, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. All right, Laura.